we're going to be exploring how we can connect to a text file, load the contents of the text file, which has got some HTML content, and add it to our web page. So that's our content that came from the text file. And if we were to update this text file and we load it again, we get the new updated value within the text file. So that's being uploaded, loaded into the main container div where we've got the H1 and the div of content that's coming from the text file. And this is all done with JavaScript where we select the page elements, we add the event listener. Within the event listener, we're gonna be using the XML HTTP request object. Once that loads, then we take the data that's being loaded and output the response text as HTML into the main element container. This example, we're gonna set up an Ajax request. So let's go ahead and add a button to the page. When the button gets clicked, that's gonna make our request return back the data from the text file and bring that back in all using JavaScript code. So within the app JS, we're gonna select the main container from the button. We'll select the button first using the document query selector method. And we only just have the one button element on the page. So we'll select that as an object within our JavaScript. And then also we'll output it into the console log just to make sure that we've properly selected the page element. So we only just have the one page element that says click. When we look into the console, we've got the element selected and that's gonna be ready to use within the JavaScript code. So now we can attach an event listener to it as well. Also, let's uh, select the main container. I'll just give it a name of main and then using the document query selector, once again, we're gonna select the element on the page, this time the one that has the class of container. So that will select that main page element and allow us to be able to use that page element within the JavaScript code. So if we were to type in main within the console, that's gonna, should return back the, the element. So once we've made a selection of those elements, we wanna add an event listener to the button. So on the button, we're adding a click event to it and it's expecting a response back using a function, so assign a function to it. So within the console log, we'll just write clicked so that will indicate that the button has been clicked and then we're gonna be ready to move on to the next step. So click the button in the console, you should be able to see the word clicked. And this is the DevTools console that we've got within. So this is the DevTools console within the Chrome browser and you can access the console by clicking anywhere and selecting inspect and that will open up the console for the page within the Chrome browser as well. You can go up to the top right hand side where there's the three dots, select under more tools and from the, there the developer tools or you can use the shortcuts in order to select the developer tools. So now that we've got the functionality of having the button clicking, we wanna make a request to the data text. So within the data text, I'm just gonna write my name and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to attempt to retrieve the content from the data text back into our HTML file and load it within the main container on our web page. We'll go ahead and we'll set up a function to handle the data request. So when the button gets clicked, then we'll make a request to the function and we can just uh, call this req data and making a request. And this is where our X XHR request will be. So let's uh, set up the main XHR object give it a name of XHR, and then we're gonna be using the new and create an XML HTTP request object. And for now, we'll just log it into the console so that we can take a look and see what the XHR object is gonna look like now. So once we click the button, we're gonna automatically just send that click into the request data. So assign it to the value of the button click and we can then comment out this content because we're not gonna need it anymore. So save that. So let's try it out where we're gonna click it and this returns back the XHR request. So this is the request object and there's a lot of properties within this object. So we wanna tra track and we wanna see the ready state values and how they're gonna be changing within the request. And then the status text is gonna be ultimately what we're retrieving back. So we need to open up the request. Once we set up the request, we then need to open a URL within the request. 
So let's set up a URL and just give it a variable name of URL. And this is where the data text value, string value is gonna sit. And that's gonna be the URL that we're gonna be opening. So within the XHR object, we're gonna open the URL path. The open is gonna require two parameters. And the second parameter is going to be the URL path. The first parameter is going to be the method that we're going to be using. So we're just making a simple get request to the URL. And this is going to be indicating that we're getting the data back from data text. So let's see what happens. We make the click. We see that now our ready state has changed. So we've got a ready state of one. We don't have any response text yet. We don't have any status. And the content isn't loaded yet. So we can look on all of these different events and handle the events as the content gets loaded. And then we also need to be able to send the request. So let's go ahead and send the request over. And this is gonna initiate the sending of the request through the different ready states in order to finalize and return back some content. So now we've got the response content back. We've got a ready state of four and we've got the URL status is okay. So we can add in an event listener to the XHR object. And this event listener is gonna be listening for the event of load. So whenever the content has finished loading, then we can run a function. And for this function, we're just gonna call it output as we're gonna output the content on the page. So let's go ahead and create the function to handle the output. And within the output, we're gonna be passing through the data content and we can console log the data as well as we'll console log and return back the this object and this is going to be referring to the whole xhr object so we don't have to pass it through to the function as we could just simply track it as this which is going to be referencing the parent object that the function that requested the function so let's go ahead and we click it and we see once we click it we've got the output function is outputting the data and this is all of the data that we've got. So we've got is trusted, current target, and this is the content that we want. We wanna get the text content. So we've got the source element, the target. So all of that information is sitting there that we can use within the data object that was passed. And then also we've got the current HTTP request object that has the response text. So if all we want is the response text from the text file, we can use this, return back the response text. So let's save that. And now we get the response text being returned back within the function. So the next step is to take the response text and output it into the HTML. So let's go ahead and do that where we're gonna select the main object and set the text content of the main object to the content of the response text. And this is only gonna get loaded once we make a complete request and return back the data from the file. So go ahead and make the request and we see now the page is updating with the data. And this data is coming from the text file. So if we were to add more content into there, that, more, that additional content would be added. If we create this as an HTML file, we can load the HTML as well directly into the page. So right now what it's doing is it's loading the text. And when we go to elements and we inspect the elements, we see that within the container, we've got HTML, but this is being HTML that's loaded as text. And that's because we've got the text content here. So if we were to update this as inner HTML, we click it, now we get the HTML properties from the text file that is being loaded dynamically. So if we have different H1 tags for that page element, we can then load that content directly within our web page. And because we're loading it and adding it to the page as HTML, those HTML tags will load the structure of the HTML content that's within the data text file. And that's how you can make a simple Ajax request. We're gonna be covering this in more detail in the upcoming lessons. So this is a simple Ajax request where we're returning the data back using the XML request object.